Hello cl class, today we're going to be looking at our Introduction to Ecology, which is in Chapter 18 of your textbook. Um, and we'll be kind of going through this next section is really all ecology stuff. It goes 18 through parts of tw Chapter 22. Um, so we kind of skip and go through different parts of the chapters here. Um, if you have the notes packet, we're going to start with some terms for 18.1. So first, our definition of ecology is the study of interactions between organisms and their environment. So we're often looking at not only the one individual organism that we've been looking at in the past, the species itself or the individual organism with genetics, but now we're going to look at how that individual organism interacts with the abiotic things around them, which are the non-living things, and also the other biotic things that are around them, the other living things. What does it eat? What eats it? Um, what kinds of things does it need to survive? Um, and all of those think factors come into ecology. Um, it's also noted as the interdependence of organisms. So if you see that word interdependence, that is how one organism is dependent on another organism to survive, or one organism is dependent on another non-living factor in the environment to survive. So our levels of organization include biosphere, ecosystem, community, population, and organism. And so it goes from the most broad at the top there with biosphere to the most uh, specific being organism or the individual um, unit or thing that we're studying. So you can see you have this triangle that's on this picture in your notes packet. If you aren't using the notes packet, you may want to draw that in just to give you an idea of how one is most broad biosphere all the way down to the organism or the individual at the bottom. So some definitions of those. Biosphere is the earth and the atmosphere. Um, it's quoted here as a thin film of life covering a lifeless planet. The ecosystem is a little more narrow, all organisms and the non-living environment in a given place. So we're looking at the organisms, the living things, but also the abiotic things, the water, the pH, the minerals, um, the soil, the rocks. Is there... Um, uh, what types of things, like even the decomposing things that are on the forest floor, that kind of stuff that's no longer living, it's just there and it's part of the environment. So you can see here, you could probably name a whole bunch of things that are living and non-living in this picture. We'll get a little more specific when we go to community, and these are all of the organisms in an ecosystem. So this one is living things only. We go down to a population. It's all the members of one species that lives in one place at one time. Those are key parts to this definition as well. So not just one species over the span of time, but that one species that is in one place at one time. And then the organism is one member of one species living in one place at one time. So we're going to narrow down to that one individual and study that one individual. All right, so we're going to continue into 18.2, which is ecology of organisms. And we have some more terms here. To start with, we have habitat, and that's where the organism lives. It does have abiotic and biotic factors. Now, we gave these terms back in Chapter 1. Abiotic are non-living components like sunlight, water, and soil. And biotic are living components like plants, animals, and predators. The tolerance range is the range of abiotic conditions for that organism where that organism can still perform all of its normal daily functions, all of its living things that it needs to do um, in order to survive. So you can see here in the picture, and you may want to draw um, something like this in your notes, um, we have this optimal range, and this is the range of temperature, soil type, um, pH levels, water that's available, where the organism survives the best. Outside of that range, we have um, where there's a little bit of stress in the environment on that organism. And you can see that very few of them are surviving in that range if, it, if the environment changes to that range. And then we have the zone of intolerance, and that's where that species cannot survive. Okay, so when we looked at these before and we were looking at species and how they evolve over time, if the environment changes to um, be very stressful for the organism, go back here, 
um, we may notice that there's a, only a few that can survive and that's where you'd see some evolution or change over time because only those individuals that survive are going to make it to reproductive age and pass on their traits. But in here we have lots of variety. This is our optimal range. All right, so acclimation is the ability for the organism to um, acclimate or adjust to um, an abiotic factor, to maybe temperature or to um, soil type or amount of water, whatever it is in that abiotic environment. So an example, moving from room to room with different temperatures. That's something that you may do. If you're uncomfortable in a particular uh, temperature, you may put on a sweatshirt or you may take off a sweatshirt, depending on what the temperature range is. So um, organisms have different abilities to control their internal conditions. We've talked about homeostasis a ton in the past, and that is the ability to um, maintain a certain internal environment. So conformers are organisms that do not regulate their internal environment um, temperature-wise, and these are considered cold-blooded. And so you may see um, a snake sitting out in the middle of a road on a chilly day, and so it's sitting out in the middle of the road to um, absorb as much heat as possible. Regulators are organisms that do regulate their internal environment with the internal temperature, and these are called warm-blooded, so like us, and our body will regulate that temperature without us thinking about it. Some things that organisms can do to acclimate is escape from the habitat. So dormancy is a state of reduced activity for the organism, like hibernation for bears. And then migration is movement of an organism to a favorable habitat. So um, migration would be birds that fly south for the winter. Immigration is movement into a habitat, and emigration is movement out of a habitat. Um, the term niche is a way of life for a species. So this is how the species um, lives daily, the role that that species plays on the environment as well. And there's five things. Um, if you're using the notes packet, I have kind of a star set out for you where you can put these five things in. That niche will include the tolerable conditions for the organism. So we've already talked about that, the tolerance range. Um, how they obtain resources. The number of offspring that they produce per year. Their time of reproduction. And then any other interactions with the environment. All of those things play a role in their niche. We do have two types of niche, niches, I guess you'd say. The fundamental niche is the range of conditions a species could potentially tolerate and the range of resources it could potentially use. So in this one, um, it's pretty broad. This is saying what is available, the total range of things that are available. Um, but what actually happens is called the realized niche, and this is your conditions or range of conditions that the species actually decides to use. So this is inside of the fundamental niche. The fundamental niche is everything that's possible, and the realized niche is the smaller range that they actually choose to use. On your notes packet, if you're using that, um, it'll have a question there, which niche is larger? The um, Fundamental niche is going to be larger because it's looking at all of the potential. Okay, niche differences. We have um, the generalist or the specialist. The generalist type of species is a species with a broad niche. So they, um, they're maybe, if you want to think of it this way, more of the laid back individuals. These are the ones that will take what they get and go with it. Um, and the specialist has a narrow niche. So they, um, their tolerance range is very small compared to a generalist. Um, and you can see that in the graph if you want to kind of draw that in just to show you an example. Um, the generalist, whatever you give me, I'll survive, I'll make it. The specialist is really narrow in the type of conditions that they enjoy or that they're able to survive in. So in this one, on your notes packet, it says which type can adapt to a changing environment better. Um, and a generalist would be able to survive better in a changing environment compared to a specialist. Okay, we are going to end here. This is 18.1 and 18.2, uh, and then we'll get into energy in 18.3 in our next set of notes.